Right, uh, a great tactic in winter, one I'd always do on venues these days, because there's so many silvers in them all, is, uh, is a short line. Personally, for me, I'd always use casters where I can, because it just gets a better stamp of roach and your skimmers and your perch. Um, I'd always feed it fairly short, because you want to do a weight on it. So somewhere where you can feed it by hand, it's, it's a throwaway then, you, you're not, it's not bothering you, you can just drop on it as and when you need to, um, especially in the mid parts of the match when the bigger fish aren't feeding. Um, and like I say, it's, I feed it by hand, it's, I always double feed, 10 casters or so, just to, just to help keep them down and make a bit of noise. Um, for hook baits though, I do prefer a maggot, just, it just seems to attract a, the, the extra bonus fish, the perch and an F1 or something like that. It can be worth fishing with casters on the hook, just as a try. Um, I have caught on it today, some nice roach, but I, I would generally fish maggots. It's, it's a bit more durable as well if you're catching little fish. It's a great line and you can catch some lovely roach like this on it. Right, um, now winter's here, definitely time to scale down all your gear. Um, you've still got to keep it balanced though. Um, I've got two rigs set up today. First is my silverfish rig. It's um, a six to eight slick, really light, but with a puller bung you land anything. I've had fifth cup to 15 pound on it, it's not a problem. Um, nice light float, four by 12, carbon stem for that because it's fishing through the water, as I'll explain later. Um, 015 mainline, I use that for everything in winter. I, I don't prat around. I don't think it makes any difference fishing lighter. I think even the thicker line falls through the water slower, which which can help. Um, and that goes down to an 010 bottom. Again, with the light elastic, you're never going to break it. Um, and then just a fine wire, a 20 hook. I'm fishing maggots, you don't need great big hooks in the winter. You're gonna get more bites, simple as that. For my other line where I'm fishing, I am fishing for bonus fish. It's the same main line. I've got an 011 bottom, it's just a touch heavier, but again, I'm never gonna get broke on that. And I just stepped the elastic up one grade, it's uh, eight to 10 slick now. Um, and that will handle literally anything I'm going to hook all winter. On this rig, I am fishing pellets and corn, so I have stepped the hook up a bit. It's a size 16 now. Um, in a four mil pellet or a piece of corn, you're going to bury that. It's just a bit better hook hold with a bigger fish. So, um, And those two rigs are literally going to cover all my winter fishing. Um, let's say, nice, nice light rigs, always carbon stems for maggots, so you can hold them through the water. Um, and always, I always use a wire stem for fishing long with bigger baits because you're just lowering it through. Um, simple, but that's all you need. Right, accuracy is all important in winter. You're not feeding a lot of bait, so you want to be sure you're fishing exactly where it is. For that reason, I always use a toss pot for pellets and corn and things like that. I'd never throw them. You're only putting a tiny bit of baiting in the winter and you want to be right on top of it. Um, today I'm fishing corn, so I've got the medium one on. I can fit 10 grains in there nicely without it all being scrunched up in there. I always use the, the rim around the top for those, just to stop it bouncing out when I'm shipping out. I don't want to be spreading it all over my peg. Um, for micros, I, would, I don't use that, I just push them in and I would always use the smaller of the pots as the small pot still holds 100 micros or so, you, which is loads of bait in winter. Um, yeah, so always use your toss pot. Keep it, keep it as accurate as you can. It will get you more bites. Right, the, um, the way you put your rig in the water and lay it through your feed is incredibly important you've got to try and match your feed and depending on what bait you're using um, it, it varies so I'll run you through how I'd fish maggots and casters um, and then I'll talk later about putting corn or pellets but 
for maggots and casters, you always need to hold your bait through the water to try and match your feed. The maggots and casters sink really, really slowly. So ship out to where you want to be. Double feed some casters. And you lay your rig across it sideways and, and really hold on to your float. So it, you're holding it, you're in contact with it the whole way through the water. Um, you'll get the odd bites on the drop. And if you don't do that, you, you're not going to see half of them. Um, it's just starting to settle up now. I would say we're going to get a bite somewhere soon after that. But like that. <laughs> Not a roach. It's it, F1's feeding in a very similar way in the winter. They often sit just off bottom and by holding your rig, um, they've just got more time to see it go past them and they'll either grab it on the drop or just follow it down that last few inches like this one has. Oh, lovely fish. That's how I uh, lay my maggot rig in. Now I'll show you how you should lay your rig with pellets of corn for the bigger fish. Right, for my longer line, as I was saying, um, I'm fishing corn, and uh, the way you lay your bait in on this is very different. It's a heavy bait, you're not looking to catch on the drop. So I'll just ship out here and uh, show you. I've got about 10 grains of corn in there. Um, so I don't need any more bait than that, that's plenty in, a, in the colder months. You're only setting a trap to catch one fish. So I'd ship out to where I'm fishing here, 13 metres today. I'll just ship out, tip them out right in line with my marker. And you'd want to lift your rig up, line it up again, and literally lower it down as you think that sweet corn's falling. So you're right on top of the little pile. You're just trying to set a trap for one fish at a time. But that's it, I know now I'm fishing, I'm exactly on top of my bait. I'm lined up with the edge of the caravan out there. Um, it's deadly accurate. You are literally, 10 bits of corn or whatever, it's, it's just setting a trap for one fish to come through. And then you're trying to catch that one fish. As soon as, soon as you've caught a fish, you need to feed again, because it's, it's probably it what you've got there. Um, right, a great little tip, especially when it's really hard in the winter, is just to put a small ball of ground bait, something really low feed, you're not trying to feed them with it, it's just as an attractant. Um, and just, again, 10 grains of corn or so, just cupping that well out the way somewhere in your peg. Um, I'm going to choose to fish it right out there, it doesn't interfere with anything else I'm doing. Um, and sometimes you can just watch it for a little bit of fizzing or or just if you're not getting any bites anywhere else on your, on your lines you've been catching on. You can just drop on it um, and you've got a lovely little trap there. It might only be worth one fish but it, that could be a three or four pound carp or an F1 or, or some skimmers. Um, it's all going to add up at the end of the day in a match or in a pleasure session. Definitely worth a few extra fish. The other time I would use ground bait, um, if a line's dying, my maggot line, especially my maggot line, it can be really good with that in the winter. Just uh, a tiny bit of loose, loose ground bait in a toss pot and tipped over my where I've been catching maggots, it can just start to bring the fish back. Um, again, it's been really successful at times this year. Um, I'm sure it will be for the rest of the winter. Yeah, just a tiny bit of loose ground bait on where I was fishing casters. And that can really just bring, just get you a couple of extra bites, which on a hard day is, is what you're looking for. 